Welcome to the video. So today we're going to be going over the Spotify car thing. This is an $80 accessory that you can put in your vehicle or at your desk, wherever it's more comfortable for you and more convenient and where it's going to serve a real purpose that will allow you to just solely control Spotify. It does literally nothing else except Spotify. For the price, you might question whether it's worth it or not because it just runs Spotify and literally nothing else. But I'm going to be going over some of its features and quirks and just seeing if it's worth it for anybody really to buy it. Now, I've had mine for about four months and I've been driving with it every single day for those past four months. It took a really long time for me to actually have the option to buy the car thing. So we're going to be kind of going over whether it's worth the wait, whether I think you should buy it or not, and just my final verdict on the car thing. So let's go for the drive and I will get back to you right after. All right, so car thing, we're gonna go over a few of the features now. So one of the things you're gonna notice at first are obviously the buttons and the screen, right? It's a whole entire thing. So over here we have the back button. So using the back button, you could go ahead and actually go and look at your recently played. So that'll bring you to whatever playlist, whatever your like songs, anything you've really gone through or you've asked it to search for, it'll show it there. And when you go back, you can just go right back to the now playing screen. And it's honestly really easy to use. You have your shuffle button, you have your previous, your pause, your next, and your like. So let's say I actually like this song, I'll add it to my like songs. And when I go back into the playlist, it'll be right at the top, just like if you were using Spotify on your desktop or mobile device. So <laughs> the other features of the car thing that are really good is that you have these presets at the top. So let's say, I want this to be a preset, this radio that I'm playing right now. In fact, it already is a preset, but I'll set it to another one just to say. You can hold down the preset and it'll set it as the preset. So now you see we have it as one and two. But let's say I wanted to go to a different one. I can go ahead and click number four and I'll start playing the WAN show. I like to listen to that in the morning and I can listen to the latest episode that's available on Spotify. And so you can actually do with podcasts, playlists, anything you really want you can have it set to a preset. And honestly, that's one of the best features about this because you don't have to talk to it. All you have to really do is just press it and that's the way you interact with it. Now, if you did want to talk to the car thing, you can say, hey, Spotify, and give it whatever you want to play. So in my case, I want to play something by the Beatles. So I'll say, hey, Spotify. I'll say, hey, Spotify play music by the Beatles. It'll announce exactly what you just told it to play and it'll start playing as you can hear. And for the most part, it'll actually start shuffling. So as you can see, we're having a shuffle and it'll go through exactly whatever it is. So in this case, if you tell it to play an artist, it'll bring up a this is whatever artist it is. And it's honestly really great if you just want to give it a non-specific. Let's say I do want a specific song. I could say, hey, Spotify, play eight days a week. And it'll announce the name of the song and it'll just start playing. And honestly, I have pretty low failure rate with that happening um, where it won't be able to find anything. Um, it doesn't happen as often as you might think. It's really good at detecting when you're saying, hey, Spotify. And as you can see, as much as I'm saying, hey, Spotify right now is because it's, I'm using it in conversation and I'm not using it to actually summon the car thing, it's not detecting it at all. So when I say, hey, Spotify, and I'm not using it outside of a sentence, it will actually cut it out completely and it won't interrupt your listening, which is a really great feature of the car thing. One of the flaws with the car thing, on the other hand, is the fact that, you know, you might not have good cell service and it might just not understand you or your Bluetooth might cut out and then the car thing stops working. You have to restart your car or unplug it, which is really hard to do when you're driving um, or impossible because depending on how you have the cable routed, it might not be very easy. But other than that, uh, the car thing, honestly, I have zero complaints with it other than the fact that sometimes I lose connection. And yeah, we're gonna go right back to the main footage where we're gonna go back to my face cam and uh, I'm gonna go over a few other things. I'm gonna go over pricing 
and whether or not I think this is worth it. Now that I've gone for the drive, you'll see that the car thing actually is pretty decent. It's a very, very simple device. Now that it only has about, what is it? It has seven buttons. So I didn't go over one of them. One of them is just a menu button to just adjust the settings of the car thing, which is just to repair it with another device or to change the language. There's not really much there. But otherwise, it's pretty convenient. You have those four preset buttons at the top that you could program to whatever you really want, as long as it's on Spotify. You have the, the knob, which could control the volume or scroll through playlist if you don't want to actually use a touchscreen and scroll through things. You have that one back button, which is pretty convenient, again, if you're actually using the screen and not using voice commands. And you have the voice commands, which work really well. And it's really good at speed detection, as well as picking up when it's actually you summoning the car thing and not just like saying, hey, Spotify, at the same time as like explaining it to someone. And there have been many, many times while I've been in the car explaining how to use this thing to my friends. And I always say, hey, you have to say, hey, Spotify, because if you don't say, hey, Spotify, it won't work. And it has never really picked up at all, like 95% of the time, it's very, very accurate. There have been occasions where it actually does pick it up while I've been using a conversation, but for the most part, it doesn't really happen. Now the car thing is $80. It's kind of a lot of money for something that just runs Spotify. Do I think it's worth it? I think so, only if, if and only if, you have a vehicle that does not have Android Auto or CarPlay, because if you do, this is pretty pointless because you can run the Spotify app natively on those platforms, or if you have a vehicle that has Spotify integration built in, I really don't think this is a great idea. I think this is more geared towards the people that have vehicles like my own where you have Bluetooth audio, but there's no other integration for the app besides the fact that you have your phone, but obviously you don't use your phone when you drive. Just gonna cause a lot of problems, safety hazard, don't do it. So, with all that being said, I think the car thing is worth it. Again, if you're in the scenario where your car has Bluetooth audio, you have an aux port, and you just want it to be easier to use Spotify. If that's the case, and that's the only reason that you need a display right in your face, right next to you while you're driving, I really think this is great. It has a CD mount in the box, an air vent mount, and it also has a mount that you can just sort of fix anywhere. It's like a 3M command strip type thing, so it's really easy to take off if you do fix it somewhere. There's no suction mount, which is kind of sucky, but it does have a magnet on the back, so with that magnetic surface, as long as you have a magnetic phone mount, you in theory should be able to mount it wherever you want. It's very small, very compact, it's very slim, so in any car you should be able to put it, again, anywhere you really want, shouldn't be a big deal. Only thing is the cable. There's only about a six foot cable in the box, and in my case, I actually wanted to route it around my steering wheel and under the floor mats and into the center console so you don't see the wire. You actually might not have seen the wire at all in the B-roll where I'm looking, I have the camera like looking at the car thing, that's because it's hidden. But in most people's cases, you might actually like end up just kind of dropping the wire down and put it into whatever um, lighter port is on your car, wherever it is rather. And um, yeah, other than that, again, I think it's worth it if you're in the market for something that literally just runs Spotify and nothing else. If that's the case, this is a thing for you. Again, it's $80, so it's kind of an investment. And you have to remember something. You might not get one when you want to because it's an invite-only product as of right now. And right now it is February 20th, 2022. And it took me about eight and a half months to get mine. Um, so yeah, there's that. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you out in your decision with the car thing. And I hope you learned something. Be sure to comment, subscribe, like the video to see more content like this. Stay notified. I'm going to be doing an extensive review on the Valve Steam Deck, assuming I get the email to buy that. A lot of these videos are just invite-only products, and I can't, can't even do it unless I get the product. But Assuming I actually do get the Valve Steam Deck, I will be making a video on that next week, promptly, and hope to see you in the next one.